Raymond McGill, who is going to be talking about stuff he knows nothing about, apparently. That is absolutely true. Hello, good evening, thank you. My name is Hamish McGill. I run an agency called Studio McGill, based in Brighton. I do graphic design, I do branding, and everything else is just confusing. So that's what I'm focusing on tonight. In front of you is a giant minus sign. I'm talking about something incredibly dull tonight. Subtractivism. Okay. Now, it's not minimalism. Oh, that was good. <laughs> this is my house. I'm not a minimalist. I'm not wearing a charcoal suit. I don't live in a glass building. This is it. So, what I'm talking about is something else. In design, for me, when it gets really interesting, exciting, is when moments happen, when something's removed. Um, oh, that's a long 20 seconds. <laughs> We did a job for Nike in my last company called BB Saunders. We asked a, um, a local writer, a Brighton based writer, to write a piece about this shoe, a magical Nike shoe that had a bit of the heel missing. It was going to change everyone's life. He decided he would write about the space in the shoe, not what Nike wanted, it's how wonderfully, how better you are for performing. He, took, he spoke about the hole in the bowl. And this is illustrated in Rachel Whitetree's house. What you see there is the negative space of the house. It's what's taken away that becomes important. You remove the house, what you see are the remains. It's the echo, the memory. Yeah, this is 20 seconds. Okay, here we go. This is Anthony Burrell's very famous ice cream spoon. How exciting can you be, an ice cream spoon? But what did he do? He took away the context of the ice cream spoon. He made a, a beautiful screen print in beautiful colours, beautifully observed. Every line is important. Hey presto, what do you have? An amazing ice cream spoon. You've taken away the mundanity to make something else. Now, can anyone read that? Minimal. Well done. I like it. You're high. Right. This is an exercise in saying how much can you take away before it disappears? How much is reduced? And I've got a point. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> By doing this. Oh. Yes. Yeah. By doing that. Okay, minimal, lovely logo. Because it became so distorted, it became memorable. Anyway, Pink Floyd medal. Great album. The first album cover, I believe, tell me if I'm wrong, that didn't have the artist and the title on the front. Now, are you going to get away with that now? Major label? I don't think so. Massive sticker. Ring tones, it's not going to happen. Okay, this is a piece by Daniel E. Tuck. It's a table called Multiply, very conceptual table. On the right hand side is a diagram of how the table's cut out of one sheet of ply, I can't remember what size, it's one sheet of ply. It's all stuck together, there's no wastage. The idea here is that the form of the table is described by how it's made. It's a record sleeve designed by. Hold on a second. This is a record sleeve designed by Designers Republic. Um, what they've done here, this is an Aphex Twin cover, and uh, they've made a shortcut between the fact that Aphex Twin had just been commissioned to design an orange advert, and the fact that they wanted to sell some singles on the basis of that. So they made a sleeve based purely on that. This is an identity for a, a gallery in Miami. All they do is, all they work with is abstract modern art. The designers for this, Carson Winkler, they designed the most abstract logo they could. No words. If you look on the left hand side, you'll see you'll see what the actual shape of the logo is in type. So you'll see where they get their forms from. so I don't have to talk for a minute, was also that his, uh, his work is completely devoid of narrative. Um, this is a chair designed by Louise Campbell. She does not, she's a Danish furniture designer. She doesn't use traditional 
craft methods for a chair. She, she seeks other ways of making them. What she's made here is a chair that you can't actually sit in. It's totally uncomfortable, <laughs> but it's a wonderful piece of work. Okay, this is by an artist, a German artist called Gerwald Reuschensnap. And he's reduced an image of a turntable to a point where you can still recognise it. The, uh, the artefact's been taken away, it's been turned into a pictogram, as it were. But, you know, we can still relate to that, we understand what it is, and it becomes beautiful in its own way. Uh, a Dutch design company called Droog designed this. It's made out of, um, I don't know how many light bulbs it is, but it's many light bulbs. They're, um, 102. 102, is it? Yeah. Yeah? Are you sure? Absolutely. Okay, have you counted them? I know it. Okay, good. Do you like it? It's all right, isn't it? It's just a light, isn't it? Um, this is a mini. We, I like this one. You might not like this, but I like this. This is called a Jeep. J-E-E-P. Just enough essential parts. You've got to like that, haven't you? That's subtraction. Just enough essential parts. That's all that's on it. It's a Jeep. It's just a basic form. James Turrell. Do you like him? Boring? He's all right, isn't he? Okay. James Turrell. His work is pure light. That's all it is. It's light on the surface. There's nothing there. But when you, if you were to go into a gallery and see a James Turrell work, what you'd see is an object in front of you. Again, it's subtraction. How's that? Is that all right? No. Okay. Pyramids, okay. Right, these two photographers, two Swiss photographers, this is part of a series. Um, nothing really to say about this. It's just a very nice basic concept that they use light and dark to describe objects on their person. It's all done in camera. Um, part of a large series of photographs. Um, again, it's about changing the image. Now, this is a piece of work I've done. Um, yay. This is a magazine called Centerfold. Um, it's not bound. It's, it comes in the same way any other magazine comes. It's in sequence. Um, it's got lots of pages, lots of pictures. But what you do, because it's not bound, you re-edit it yourself, or you pull it apart and put it on your wall. Just to point out that when you take something away, it's not always good news. I've been on one of those, and I still wake up screaming. What? In ski boots? In ski boots? No, furry ski boots. Ugh, can you imagine? Yeah, okay. And then in honour of the, the finest moment of uh, reduction is John Cage's 4 minutes 33 seconds. So we'll just hear a little excerpt from that. There isn't any audio, by the way. It's completely silent. Brilliant. Excellent. Well done.